Today we're going over how to measure the refrigerant charge on an R4 Tenet single speed air conditioning system equipped with a piston or capillary tube metering device at the indoor coil. So we're going to be focusing on the blue low side gauge that's connected to the large vapor line in order to measure our total superheat. We're also going to be looking at the red gauge and, and measuring subcoing as well, but our main focus is on superheat to determine if we're undercharged, correctly charged, or overcharged. We're going to be giving one example. I'm going to be walking you through the whole thing. And then after that, there's going to be three more that you can solve on your own. After the system's been running for about 10 to 15 minutes and, and you have the gauges or the probes connected and the temperature sensors, we then need to determine what the target superheat is for the system. So remember that if a system has a piston or capillary tube and it's a single speed system, you have to check the refrigerant charge via the total superheat method. And so we're going to determine the target superheat by first measuring the outdoor dry bulb temperature, which in this case it's 90 degrees Fahrenheit, the indoor wet bulb temperature, which is measured with a psychrometer, that is 66 degrees. And so you can use a digital psychrometer right over by the return grill in order to measure that indoor wet bulb temperature. Using a target superheat chart or a calculation, we find that we have a 13 degree target superheat. In this example, the blue low side gauge is measuring a pressure of 122.8 PSI. If we were to convert that to the saturated temperature of R4 Tenet in the middle of the indoor coil, it's gonna be 42 degrees Fahrenheit. We're also going to have a temperature on that large vapor line of 54 degrees. So we take 54 degrees minus 42 and we're left with an actual total superheat of 12 degrees. We compare our actual total superheat of 12 degrees compared to our target superheat, which is 13 degrees. And so we're only one degree off. So the object is you want to get plus or minus two degrees away from your target superheat. And that's where we're at. We are correct. If the total superheat measured on the system is higher than our target superheat, then we're undercharged. But if our total superheat measured on the system is lower than our target superheat, then we're overcharged. And so you just got to keep that in mind when you're measuring using the total superheat method. So because our superheat is correct within that plus or minus two degree range, we do have an accurate refrigerant charge, but I also want you to pay attention to the red high side gauge and what's happening on the high side of the system because you're gonna to need to pay attention to that for our other examples. So in this example one, we have a pressure on the red high side gauge attached to the small liquid line of 336 PSI. If we were to convert that pressure to the R4 tonight saturated temperature in the middle of the outdoor coil, we would have 104 degrees as our saturated temperature. Now notice on the small liquid line, we have a temperature of 96 degrees. So we take 104 degrees saturated temperature minus 96 degrees on the actual line temp, and we have a subcooling of eight degrees. So eight degrees is a pretty, pretty good subcooling. It's usually around anywhere from say six to maybe uh, 14, maybe 16 degrees of subcooling on a system that's accurately charged with a piston orifice. But once again, you can't check the refrigerant charge with subcooling. You have to check it with the total superheat method. And remember the definition of subcooling is the temperature decrease of the liquid refrigerant from where the refrigerant travels from the outdoor coil until it gets to the small liquid line exiting the outdoor unit. So to calculate subcoiling, it's the saturated temperature minus the line temperature. And total superheat is the temperature increase of the vapor refrigerant from where it travels through the indoor coil until it exits the indoor coil and travels over to the outdoor unit and total superheat is the vapor line temperature minus the saturated temperature. In scenario two, we have a outdoor dry bulb temperature of 100 degrees Fahrenheit. And we have an indoor wet bulb temperature of 70 degrees measured at the return of the running system. You're going to need to calculate the target superheat using our target superheat chart. And also our blue gauge is measuring a pressure of 109.4 PSI with a saturated temperature of 36 degrees Fahrenheit. So that's the temperature it is in the middle of the indoor coil. On the large vapor line, we're measuring a temperature of 60 degrees. And over on the high side gauge, we have a pressure of 365.8 PSI. We convert that to the R4 Tenet saturated temperature in the middle of the outdoor coil, and we have 110 degrees Fahrenheit. We also have a temperature on that small liquid line of 105 degrees Fahrenheit. Now I'm gonna pause the video and let you determine what the target superheat is what the actual running superheat is, compare the two, 
and also note what the subcoin is. I'm going to give you the answer after we pause the video. So because our outdoor dry bulb temperature is 100 degrees and our indoor wet bulb temperature is 70 degrees, we line them up on a target superheat chart and we find that we have a target superheat of 15 degrees Fahrenheit. Now on the large blue gauge, we have a pressure of 109.4 PSI converted to a saturated temperature of 36 degrees. We have a line temperature of 60 degrees. So on that large vapor line, 60 degrees minus 36 degrees, and we're left with a total superheat of 24 degrees. We have a higher running total superheat than we do our target superheat. In fact, it is nine degrees higher. So you take 24 degrees total superheat minus 15, and we're left with nine degrees of a higher superheat than what we should have. If we were to add refrigerant into this system, what's gonna happen is our total superheat will decrease and it'll get closer to our target of 15 degrees. So we are certainly undercharged in this scenario. I also want you to take note over on the red high side gauge, we have a pressure of 365.8 PSI. We have a saturated temperature in the middle of the outdoor coil of 110 degrees Fahrenheit. We also have a liquid line temperature of 105 degrees. So we take 110 degrees saturated temperature minus 105 and we're left with five degrees of subcoin. So you notice that because we're slightly undercharged, our subcoin is lower than in our last example. So in this example, we only have five degrees of subcoin. Let's move on to scenario three. In scenario three, we're measuring an outdoor dry bulb temperature of 90 degrees. We're measuring a indoor wet bulb temperature of 64 degrees. So we line that up on a target superheat chart in order to calculate our target superheat. Over on the blue gauge, we are measuring a pressure of 97 PSI. We convert that to a saturated temperature of 30 degrees in the middle of the indoor coil. We're also measuring a line temperature on the large vapor line of 70 degrees. Over on the red gauge, we're measuring a pressure of 309.5 PSI, and we convert that to a saturated temperature for R4 tonight in the middle of the outdoor coil, and we have 98 degrees Fahrenheit. And we also have a liquid line temperature of 98 degrees. I'm gonna pause the video so you can calculate the target superheat and compare that to the actual total superheat on the running system. Also take note of your subcoin on the red high side gauge as well. So because we have a outdoor dry bulb temperature of 90 degrees and an indoor wet bulb temperature of 64 degrees, we line them up on a target superheat chart and we're left with a target superheat of nine degrees. So that's our target for our superheat. On the blue gauge connected to the large vapor line, we're measuring a pressure of 97 PSI. We convert that to a saturated temperature of 30 degrees and that's a big deal because 30 degrees is lower than 32 degrees, which is the temperature in which water freezes at. So that means that any humidity in the air crossing that indoor coil is gonna freeze onto that coil and eventually it will turn into a solid block of ice. So that's, that's certainly a problem right there. On our large vapor line, we're measuring a temperature of 70 degrees. And so to find what our total superheat is, we take 70 degrees minus 30 degrees, and we're left with a very high superheat of 40 degrees. So we are 31 degrees higher in our total superheat than we should be. We don't have enough refrigerant at the indoor coil to absorb the heat load in the air crossing the coil. And that's why the temperature of the refrigerant exiting the indoor coil is 70 degrees. It's absorbed so much heat from the the temperature in the air crossing the indoor coil that it's risen to 70 degrees. So in this scenario, we are low on refrigerant. And if we were to look on the red high side gauge, you see a pressure of 309.5 PSI. We convert that to a saturated temperature of 98 degrees Fahrenheit. And we also have a liquid line temperature of 98. So we take 98 minus 98 and we're left with zero degrees of subcoin. If we don't have any subcoin because we're so low on refrigerant, that means that the metering device is not even gonna be able to do its job properly because it's not fed with a solid column of liquid entering the metering device. And so we are just very low on refrigerant, severely low. And in this scenario, you definitely need to check for leaks in order to determine why the system is so low on refrigerant. In scenario four, we're measuring an outdoor dry bulb temperature of 95 degrees Fahrenheit, and we have an indoor wet bulb temperature measured with a psychrometer near the return of 68 degrees Fahrenheit. You're gonna put that on a superheat chart in order to determine what the target superheat is. 
and on the blue low side gauge, we're measuring a pressure of 132.5 PSI. We convert that to a saturated temperature of 46 degrees in the middle of the indoor coil. We're also measuring a line temperature on the large vapor line of 49 degrees. Also take note that on the red gauge, we have a pressure of 397.5 PSI. We convert that to a saturated temperature of 116 degrees Fahrenheit. We have a temperature on the small liquid line of 98 degrees. I'm gonna pause the video so that you can determine what the target superheat is, what the total superheat is, and compare them against each other, as well as determine what our subcooling is. You want to determine if this is undercharged, correctly charged, or overcharged. Because our outdoor dry bulb temperature is 95 degrees and our indoor wet bulb temperature is 68 degrees, we have a target superheat of 14 degrees. And so we take that 14 degrees and then we compare that to our total superheat of the running system. We have 132.5 PSI. We convert that to a saturated temperature of 46 degrees Fahrenheit. That's the saturated temperature in the middle of the indoor coil. And then we take our line temperature on the large vapor line of 49 degrees. So we take 49 minus 46, and we're left with three degrees of running total superheat. Three degrees compared to our 14 degree target is 11 degrees off. And because our total superheat is so low, it's very close to zero, we are really overcharged. Also take note on our red high side gauge, we have a pressure of 397.5 PSI. We convert that to a saturated temperature of 116 degrees Fahrenheit. So we take 116 minus our liquid line temperature of 98 degrees, and we're left with a subcooling of 18 degrees Fahrenheit. So that subcooling is a little high. Our total superheat is too low. We are overcharged. What you need to take into consideration with a system that has a piston as the metering device, the thing is the total superheat and the target are constantly going to be changing depending on the indoor heat load and the outdoor temperature. And so really three degrees of total superheat is very close to zero. If you accidentally get to zero, what's going to happen is you're not going to have vapor refrigerant entering the compressor. You're going to have liquid entering the vapor compressor and it's going to damage it. And so we want to stay away from that. You would never want to set a system any lower than say five or six degrees of running total superheat. If you measure superheat, it's a guarantee that you have vapor refrigerant that is passing through that vapor line service valve and entering into that vapor compressor. And it's a, so it's a safeguard for the compressor. And if you want to learn more about checking the refrigerant charge and how to connect the system, how to prepare it, how to troubleshoot it, Make sure to check out our Refrigerant Charging and Service Procedures for Air Conditioning book. We also have quick reference cards. We also have a thousand question workbook that goes along with our book. So make sure to check all those out over at our website at acservicetech.com and also on Amazon. We also have our eBooks available over at Google Play and Apple Books. And make sure to check out our new Inverter Mini Split Operation and Service Procedures book. Hope you enjoyed yourself and we'll see you next time at AC Service Tech channel.